watching Apple Tech Beast. This is Apple Tech Beast, and as you may or may not know, uh, I use a MacBook Pro 15-inch non-retina mid-2012 laptop to edit all my videos and to do all my photos and that sort of thing. I use my gaming computer to um, compress things, upload things, edit photos. My MacBook is my primary uh, device for making content, and it always will be because I like Final Cut Pro. But it didn't take long after I got the laptop to realise that I wanted SSD storage because the hard drive was it was full, it was pretty damn slow, and I couldn't really afford an SSD at that time. And it's only now um, that I've managed to afford an SSD and get the one I wanted, uh, which is an 850 Evo 1TB SSD. Uh, very reliable, very fast, and a massive capacity, which is just what I needed. It doubles the capacity I had before, which is 500 gigs, uh, and it also makes it all reliable, because a hard drive can fail at any point. But yeah, the reason I can actually afford an SSD now, especially one of uh, a terabyte capacity and uh, of, of the speed that it is, is kind of down to the fact I found it on Black Friday deals week uh, before Christmas, I think it was about 180 quid, as opposed to 250 or 300, whatever it is now. But it's also down to the fact that SSDs have gone down in price a lot. They just have. The price per gigabyte is far lower than it was um, when I first got my laptop. And so you can do this sort of thing for quite cheap. And I would definitely recommend it if you have an older laptop, uh, like mine, or even older, uh, because it just sort of brings it back to life, makes it more reliable, and it will give you more storage if uh, you need it. So the way I did this is to use Carbon Copy Cloner, or CCC, to uh, transfer all the data from my hard drive to the SSD uh, externally so I didn't have to do anything to the computer uh, at that stage and then I could try to boot from the SSD using a USB cable and a little uh, hard drive caddy sort of thing just to see if everything had migrated properly and to make sure that it would actually work inside the computer. Now that plan didn't quite work as it wouldn't actually boot from the SSD using the USB um, drive caddy sort of thing. It said it transferred all of the data across and nothing was sort of amiss, but it just wouldn't boot. It wouldn't find the SSD uh, within the operating system once you were trying to boot it up. So I did kind of a stupid thing that ended up working and just decided to put the SSD in the laptop anyway and to do the installation and without knowing that it was going to work. And it did. It just worked perfectly fine like nothing had ever happened, apart from the fact it was running at 10 times the read and write speeds, just about, uh, and it had twice the storage. Now I'm still not really sure what caused that or why it happened, uh, because the SSD still had enough power to get all the data from the hard drive to the SSD, because it transferred all the data across, it just wouldn't boot. I'm not really sure. I could have added external power to the Anker um, USB SATA adapter caddy thing. Um, that might have worked, but SSDs really don't use that much power. I don't think that was the problem. It could have been a problem within El Capitan, or however you say, the new operating system, uh, but I'm really not sure. Although it hasn't affected anything uh, whatsoever. So, if you are using El Capitan and the same laptop and same SSD and caddy thing as me, then I wouldn't worry. Uh, I just install it if it doesn't boot straight away. Obviously, be very careful, as usual, when doing stuff inside computers, uh, so make sure you ground yourself on the case of the laptop, or, or have an anti-static wristband if you're on carpet or anywhere where there is high um, staticness. Uh, I'm not really sure where that is. I think it's in dry environments. They are quite bad for static, so just be very careful about that. But overall, it is a very safe method, because you're effectively just copying everything from your hard drive to the SSD, and without deleting anything, as long as you don't blow up your hard drive in the process of the uh, installation, uh, then you will always have the data it in two places. Uh, that's also a good thing about this, you'll also you'll always have a copy of your data on a hard drive somewhere, as long as you don't get rid of the hard drive, which would be stupid. Yeah, it's a very safe method, and it's pretty easy as well, there are plenty of tutorials online um, to show everything that you have to do, but I'll just run through them now, so you basically just have to open up the laptop, ground yourself on the case of the laptop, or wear an antistatic wrist strap like I've mentioned, you have to unscrew the cradle sort of support bars, and once you've taken them out, don't lose the screws, don't lose any of the screws in the laptop, because they are very hard to replace, and are just It'll just be awkward. And then very carefully unplug the SATA connector uh, from the back of the hard drive or SSD that you've got in the laptop ready. Once you've got the hard drive out or SSD out, you have to take the little sticky tab off so you can uh, apply that to the new SSD uh, so you can lift it out easily when you need to. And also unscrew these screws from the side of the hard drive or SSD that's already in there and put them in the new one because I'm not sure what they do. I think they're for support to keep it in the right place sort of thing, but I'm not too sure. You just have to put them in the new one to make it fit properly. And then basically do everything in reverse, so plug the SATA connector back in, put the cradle sort of support bars back in, screw everything up nice and evenly, so do it diagonally as well, uh, just to make sure everything's tight, and then it should boot. 
hopefully, if you've done it all right. And in regards to the uh, carbon copy cloner part, it's you just follow the instructions online or in the software itself. It's pretty self-explanatory. You just have to make sure you partition the drive properly. That I think that's probably the hardest bit, but you literally just have to make sure it's set to the right thing. But now it's time to see what is actually done. So the read and write speeds, the boot times, and the loading applications, and all of that sort of thing. So as you can see on the screen right now, this is the read and write speeds of the, uh, of the hard drive. I'll do the hard drive first. So I think it was around 50 megs. I can't actually see it on the screen right now, but I think it was around 50 megs right or re it was around 50 for both which is really not very good at all for a macbook pro um, or any computer in this day and age and then the read and write speeds for the ssd were around 500 uh, for read and write which is about 10 times more and that is uh, quite good so in regards to opening applications and that sort of thing uh, they are lightning fast it is crazy how much of a difference it makes. Um, although with booting the computer, I haven't noticed that much difference. I mean, it probably half the time, but it's still not crazily quick like my uh, gaming computer, which is running off a, an 840 Evo. But I mean, I don't really care about that. I don't care how fast it boots because I'm not shutting it down. I, I basically boot it up at the start of the day and shut it down at the end. But once you've booted up, it is insanely quick, and that is all that matters. Now, for what I use the laptop for, so for video editing, uh, it is absolutely perfect because I can scrub through all the footage and it is really smooth. I can apparently edit 4K video on here well now, uh, which I couldn't before, according to the Blackmagic disk speed test. But yeah, the speeds are absolutely insane. Uh, and as you can see here, I have to speed up the hard drive test because it literally took like, a minute longer than the SSD. Um, so it is. It is about double the speed, it turns out. Uh, you can see here the SSD takes about 45 seconds to boot up and the hard drive takes about 1 minute 42. So there is a far bigger difference than I thought there'd be of about a minute, um, which is absolutely brilliant if you're into that sort of thing. Um, but like I said, I don't really care about boot times because it, you only really experience it once in a day, or I do anyway. Uh, all I want to do is to store more stuff on it and to have everything load quickly and to allow me to video edit more efficiently. That was my installation guide kind of thing showing you how fast SSDs are compared to hard drives in a MacBook Pro um, of this age. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then give it a like. If you didn't, then dislike it uh, and comment on your opinion on my channel and this video in particular down below. But now I have this SSD, I may be encouraged to do more. More videos, which hasn't been happening recently. Uh, but also, I have reached 5,000 subscribers, so thank you. I will try and do something for that, although I, I'd like to say that the giveaway I just did was for the 5,000 subscriber thing. I just didn't really think it would. I'd get there that quickly, but anyway, thank you for that. Um, I think I'm on like 2.3 or 2.4 million views on the whole channel as well, which is absolutely insane. I'm going to try and get more videos out this year, um, hopefully for some to be really successful, like the last years. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and goodbye.